Not all duplexes are the same, folks. I'm here to talk to you today about what you need to look for in a duplex that makes it stand out from the other duplexes you may have the opportunity to buy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. This is the place where I help investors make their money in real estate, right? Today, we're working with a man named Chad. He is investing. Uh, in one of the cheaper markets in the United States, right? You're looking for some multifamily properties, and I'm here to hook you up with those, brother. And what else I like to do is I like to not only provide you with deals, Chad, but I like to provide you with real estate education and strategy advice, right? So what I've done for you today, brother, based on your criteria that you've been sending me and some of the properties you've sent me, I think I have a deal that's going to work for you. So without question, I'm going to go over the financial aspects of this specific deal for you, right? How much money you need to put down, how much cash flow you're going to make, the whole shebang. But in addition to that, I want to teach you a little something today, right? I want to teach you how to identify a multifamily property that's going to be different than the rest, right? Not all duplexes are made the same, folks. There's different layouts, different configurations, things like that, right? So a lot of properties might appear to be similar. Uh, but there's like some unique changes. So we're going to be going over that while going over the numbers of this deal, right? Because that's what this show is all about, man. It's teaching you guys how to invest, how to learn, and providing you deals, and then my team providing you the backup to do those deals, right? Because if you do like this deal, Chad, then I'll handle it as your broker, and then my team can handle the property management. Really quick, everybody else who's watching this show, because they clicked on the video, because they're interested in trying to figure out, like, oh, shit, dude, I would like to know what type of duplex is better than a different one. I don't want to buy the crappy one, right? I want to buy the good one, right? If that is you, you're not my man, Chad, I just want you to know the deal is no longer available. I sent this to him privately. And then, of course, later I published them publicly on Holton Wise TV so we could all learn the lessons, right? Because you could apply the lessons I'm teaching you today with his property in your own home market, you know, wherever you are, man. These, these strategies work in Boise, Idaho. They work in Hawaii. They work in Texas. They work in friggin', I don't know, Detroit, right? They work everywhere, right? But if you want to go further and actually partner with my team one-on-one -on -one and work with us like Chad is doing, uh, just click the show notes below. Uh, there's a link to do that. Here's our email address. Shoot us your phone number. We'll hop on the phone, talk to you, and you can get the vi uh, the videos and the deals in real time privately and actually work with me one-on-one -on -one like Chad is doing. So without further ado, Chad, let's talk about this duplex. Let's talk about the market. Let's talk about the numbers, and let's talk about the differences in layout and why I think that is so much better right now. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Let's get into this property. I friggin' love this property, uh, like, a lot. Like, there's a lot of things about this house, uh, this duplex, that I really, really like. Now, for people that watch my show uh, frequently, who've been watching Holton Wise TV for quite some time, you'll know that I'm not one of those guys. I'm not one of those brokers. It's like, oh, this property's so awesome. It's so awesome. It's so great. I hate that shit, right? You get... You know, some fucking beat up ghetto fucking shit box house. And then you read the listing description and like the listing agents like this charming little bungalow. Like, bro, this house looks like fucking shit. All right. Let's like talk about what we're actually trying to buy. Right. You can make a lot of money buying shitty houses. Right. So if a house is a little shitty house, let's just acknowledge that it's a shitty house. Right. And that's how I've always done things. Right. That's how I sell properties. I, I, I sell you on 
Like, reality. I'm not going to try to fluff you and be like, oh, this thing looks great, when clearly we're all looking at it like, dude, that thing sucks, right? So I don't often be like, man, I love this house. I love this house. I try to give you guys an objective viewpoint, right? Because you're trying to make an investment decision, right? There's nothing perfect. The good, you got to take the good with the bad, man. With that said, though, I do really, really like this house because there are several things going on with this house that are out of the norm of what we get in the Cleveland market, right? The first is going to be the location, 1612 Maple Drive, Lorraine, Ohio, okay? Just hit the market two days ago, priced at $104,900. This is the house. Let me pull up that picture. I love the fact that it's in Lorraine. Lorraine is one of my hot spots right now, okay? We deal with a lot of outer state investors. Everybody's coming to the Cleveland market. Cleveland, 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 because they, they Google things, they hear things, nationwide publications. Like, I know I've been interviewed by Realtor.com, like, multiple times, right? By the way, if you ever want to see uh, any of the places that Holton Wise or that I've appeared in the news or been interviewed by news publications or anything like that, obviously you can Google it, uh, but we do track that stuff for you guys. It's on the press page of HoltonWise.com. But anyway, I I've been interviewed by, you know, Realtor.com multiple times, and, like, it just feels like they're always like, what are the 10 best cash flow markets? Stuff like that, right? I'm sure you guys have all seen those types of articles, right? Well, Cleveland is always up there, right? Because of that, we get a lot of people from out of town, right? A lot of people from out of town coming to the Cleveland market, but they're only looking, they're like laser focused on Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. They forget that Cleveland is just one city in the greater metropolitan area. And a city that is overlooked all the friggin' time is Lorraine. I think Lorraine right now, a lot of the like C-grade stuff we do in Cleveland, I think objectively you get a better base of tenants out there in Lorraine. I think you get a nicer housing stock in Lorraine, and the best part is it's typically cheaper than Cleveland, and the whole goddamn cherry on the top of that song, bitch, is the fact that the city itself of Lorraine more landlord-friendly than the city of Cleveland itself, right? So because of that, one of the main things I really dig about this house is the fact that it's in Lorraine. The second thing I dig about this house is the layout, folks. This is a side-by-side, -side, okay? It feels like two single-family homes. In the Cleveland market, we have a lot of duplexes, but like 99.9% .9 of them are going to be the up-down, right? So like tenant one would be here, tenant two is living above them, right? That causes problems, that causes friction, right? They fight, okay? And that leads to higher turnovers. Turnovers hurt you as investors, right? So the fact that this is a side-by-side, -side, whenever you get the opportunity to buy a side-by-side -side duplex, you should take it because there's not very many of them, right? And if you're going to get a duplex, it's the best kind of duplex. And then lastly, uh, <clears throat> one last thing I'm going to say before we go through all the pictures to tell you what we got to do to this is another thing that stands out uh, is the year built, right? Right there, highlighted, right there, 19 57 okay we have a lot of housing stock in the cleveland market that's like turn of the century 1910 1920 you know that kind of stuff right even a couple houses that are like before 1900 right so like late 1800s early 1900s right so 57 is actually pretty new housing stock for us right so that that's great <clears throat> that's awesome for us right we don't have incredibly old stuff right probably not dealing with knob and two boy or things of that nature right so that's nice okay now as far as the property 1049 is what they're asking. We got to offer them 1049. This is an awesome house. We got to do a little work though, right? Because one of the units looks like this. The other one's already got a tenant, uh, so we don't got to worry about that. But this is a little dated, okay? This looks like, you know, it's coming out of the 50s or the 70s, right? We got to update this, right? But nothing major. Just some cosmetics, man. Just some cosmetics, right? We can't have the, you know, super dated like wood toilet seat. That's not going to work. This vanity, that's not going to work. No tenants are excited about that. No tenants are excited about this, right? Home Depot, Lowe's quality stuff is all we need to do. Just cosmetically fix this bad boy up. Good looking mechanicals. That furnace and hot water tank look to be newer. Looks like a great little nice little area, man. Super side-by-side -side layout, vinyl sided. The roof appears to be in pretty darn good shape. This is sweet right so we offer 1049 because that's what they're asking because we need to take this sucker down throw in fifteen thousand dollars a cosmetic reno our all-in investment is 119.9 as far as rents go 
Currently, one tenant's paying seven fifty. Of course, we've seen the outdated vacant unit, but in reality, these are eight hundred fifty dollar uh, rental units, right? So the one that's already in there, we'll try to slowly work them up, right? But that extra hundred bucks, that's not really you know making or breaking anything, right? The fact that we don't have to turn that unit over because that one's probably dated too is what really matters. So eventually, we'll get them up to eight fifty, right? Then we're bringing in seventeen hundo, twenty thousand four hundred for the year. Of course, folks, I'm objective, so I know you ain't. I'm going to tell you you're going to keep that 20400 because you ain't. Because sometimes people don't pay. Sometimes we evict people. You got to pay cap expenditures. You got to pay taxes. You got to pay all the stuff, right? There's a lot of costs that come with managing a rental property portfolio. You see them right there on the chart for you. That is with my team doing the management for you, right? So you're completely passive in this. This is what it should look like. Of that 20400 you're supposed to make, in reality... Your true profit is going to be around ten thousand four hundred forty for the year, right? Now, with our hundred twenty thousand dollars investment, right, hundred nineteen nine, you're putting out of your pocket forty one two and a quarter, right? Because you're going to need to spend your down payment money plus I'm factoring in that fifteen thousand dollars, right? Because I'm not going to get you eight fifty. Uh, you know, with the house looking dated like that, right? You try to offer a dated house like that. Could we rent it like that? Yeah, probably. But you know what we're going to rent it to? Some tenant that can't live anywhere else, right? So it's going to be like a below average tenant, right? A tenant who's only living there because they can't get another house, right? You want to give them a reason to want to stay, right? Because you get a tenant that lives in your house for five years, you're making more money than if during that same five years you get three tenants, right? Turnovers kill you, right? So, after the reno, after the down payment, you're out of pocket 42 and a quarter. Banks kicking in 78. That, folks, is a 16% cash on cash return, a nine cap, and you're in a very nice landlord friendly area with what I consider to be a premium asset when we're comparing it to other multifamily low cost assets. This deal is a banger, which is why we need to go in full price. Don't pussyfoot around. Don't be like, James! Don't think we can get it for 80. No, we can't get it for 80. James, do you think we can get it for 90? No, I don't think we can get it for 90. I think we need to pay 104 9 I comprehend that, you know, you'd like to get it for 90, but I don't believe that will happen. If you'd like me to, to write up an offer at 90, I can do so, but you're probably not going to get the deal. My opinion is we got to come in full price because this is one hell of an asset and we want to take this down for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.